Who among us failed high school math? Because if you did, you're not gonna like this one, but it's a very important video to cover. We're going to be talking about sine and cosine and the time node, because those really play into each other. I think we've already talked about the time node before, so I'm going to just go over that real quickly. Uh, time in your materials here, uh, let's just use the vertex color material that I've been working with uh, over the past couple of videos. Uh, time is simply a value that we can use uh, that returns the amount of seconds that have passed since this game started. It's just that easy. <laughs> so, for instance, if we were to be uh, insane and put the time into the emissive color, uh, we're going to get a very shiny thing that gets more and more shiny as time goes on. So if we apply this, yeah, we can see that this uh, gets quite shiny quite quickly. Uh, we don't necessarily want that, uh, but just as a example. What we do instead is usually we add a time node when we're uh, scrolling through a texture, like panning a texture or whatever, all with a sine or cosine node. If we want to do any like modify time, we use the time node, we do some math on it, and then we put that into the sine or the cosine node. Now, what does sine or cosine do? And I very much like that question. And for that, we're actually going to go back into our flat color material that we have here. Um, I suppose we can use the one that I use the custom data on, but I think I prefer to just like use the normal flat color instead. Sine and cosine are uh, pretty much the same node, it's just a matter of where they start. And you might be thinking, what the hell do you mean with that? Well, sine and cosine are just nodes that make a curve. And that curve, this is actually like not horribly drawn, uh, <laughs> goes from a value of positive 1 to a value of negative 1 in a certain uh, time period. With, of course, like the middle line here then being like a value of zero. The only difference between sine and cosine is uh, that cosine starts here and sine starts here. Or it's the other way around. I can never remember. Because much like uh, the direction of the height lerp, it doesn't actually matter uh, that you know this uh, by heart where they start. It's just... In most cases, they're both applicable. Sometimes you want to start with uh, one position. Sometimes you want to start with the other position. It doesn't really matter that much. Usually, we just use the uh, sign node. And there we have the period, which is the amount of time that it takes to go from uh, 1 to minus 1. So if that's 1, it's going to take 1 second to go from uh, positive 1 to negative 1. Very often, uh, we don't actually want to go from positive 1 to negative 1. Very often what we actually want to do is we want to go from 0 to 1. And that is where we uh, just simply use the uh, remapping node. This allows you to put in a high value and a low value. Uh, the default for the input value is uh, 0 to 1, and the output will also be 0 to 1. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say, no, our low value actually is negative 1. So this makes... Whatever we put into here, it's expecting a value of negative 1 to 1, and it's going to remap that to a 0 to 1 value. So now we have a sine wave that effectively just goes from 0 uh, to 1. You can also do some more manual math, which is probably slightly more efficient. Uh, what you can do is you can simply add 1 to it. So now it's going from 2 to 0, and then you can divide it by 2, and now it's going from 1 to 0. This does the exact same thing. It's just some more simple math. The remap value range like does a little bit more math, uh, because, of course, it takes in variable amounts. If you're following along with this math, uh, this is technically better. If you can't be bothered doing this, uh, just use the remap node. That's entirely fine as well. And we can now use this as a 0 to 1 value uh, for the alpha of a lerp, for instance. So let's add linear interpolation, uh, the alpha, and we're going to be lerping between... I'm just going to do two constant colors because we don't need those to be like parameters at the moment. Uh, and we're going to be lerping between like blue and fucking magenta or something like that. Now, the sine node is not going to work too well uh, if it doesn't have an input, and for that, again, uh, we can just use the time input. This is going to flash quite quickly back and forth uh, between the two. Uh, as you can see, it's going back and forth between the two colors. Now, if we divide uh, our time by, like, two, 
is going to be fading back and forth a little bit slower. If we divide it by like 100, it's going to be fading back and forth between the two of them quite slowly. I'm going to keep talking here, hoping that at some point you're going to start noticing that it's a little bit more blue now than at the beginning of the sentence, but this is actually like taking quite a while because dividing it by 100 actually means that it takes 100 seconds, which is like about a minute and a half to change from one color into the other. So we're actually just going to set this to 10 instead, and now you can see the effect more subtly happening, but you can actually see it happening. So, uh, for color lurping, this is a very cool thing, but you can do this with, like, everything, right? Instead of just lurping uh, the colors here, what we can do is we don't even need to do a loop for this, to be honest with you. Um, well, we, we can use the alpha and then also put that into the roughness. So now, as it fades between these two colors, it's also fading between being reflective and being non-reflective, which is a very, very cool effect. So there's a lot of stuff that we uh, can do with this. Uh, sine nodes, cosine nodes, uh, together with like the time input, are also often used for uh, like foliage wind movement because we can do that in the shader. We have our like world position offset. So if we uh, take that world position offset and we just get a uh, like vector three, which is only in the up direction, and we multiply that by like a strength amount so let's say 100 and then we multiply that by our um sign but this one doesn't have to be like normalized between zero and one because a world position offset can just go into the negative as well so we'll just use our normal sign uh to multiply that with and then we put that into the world position offset uh we now see that it's also uh going up and down as uh, we go along with the sign as well so you can imagine uh putting this into like a dynamic parameter for the strength that we have here, we suddenly have options to make uh, like leaves moving back and forth very, very easily. So anything that needs to cycle and bob back and forth between two values, that's kind of where the sine node comes in. And again, we can technically also use cosine uh, for all this uh, because it works the exact same way. We can put in cosine here and there and like there as well and you, you see this works the exact same way it just starts at a different position so for the most part like cosine isn't actually that relevant or sine isn't that relevant no matter uh what you use you'll probably be fine usually i end up just using the sine so this is a quick little overview of how you can use a sine in combination with time to make things lerp back and forth right now we're lerping between color between roughness and between positions all at the same time with the sine and cosine node uh, because they're all being driven by the same thing it's a really quite cool effect and you're probably going to end up using this quite a lot and for the full course if you're watching this in the future it should be all up on the youtube channel already but if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded there will be a link down below in the description to the patreon where you can find the full course and a very big thank you to all of my patreons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my cave digger tier patreons Sergey thomas